Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Late Night Vision Show. We are on location again here at the Cellmark Ranch. We've got some familiar faces again with us. Uh, and, and to introduce who we got with us, Mr. Jason Robertson, owner of Outdoor Legacy. What's going on? Who we got? Man, this is uh, it's exciting. We uh, are here at the Cellmark Ranch and that is here in, I guess, where we Fairfield, Teague, Texas. Yep. Freestone uh, County, Texas. Freestone County. All right. Beautiful place. We are very, very happy to be here. And we've got a couple of cool guests to be on the show tonight. <laughs> we have got, I'm going to introduce, starting right over here and work our way back to me. This is a frequent flyer on the Late Night Vision show. Again, as he continues to uh, put notches in his belt of how many times he can be on the late night vision show uh, We're gonna have to make new rules because he's, uh, he's he's barging in here all the time But mr. Jeff Murray, he is the executive vice president of sales over at Cellmark and as you know Cellmark uh, They're a company with a lot of brands under their belt, but they are the uh, U.S. distributor for Pulsar. They act as Pulsar USA. So that's who we've got with us. Thanks for coming back on the show, Jeff. Absolutely. Again, keep right. uh, extending that lead where it's going to be insurmountable. <laughs> that's right. Uh, also, you're not we, getting paid. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's, right. Yeah, that's right. There, there's no prize. <laughs> yeah. Also, the man with his head down over here trying to hide <laughs> is uh, Mr. Justin Poole. He is the thermal market manager at Cellmark. So if you are upset because you are not getting your thermals if you've got a back order and like yeah, this is the man yes. <laughs> no, no. The one to blame yeah he's if you're looking for who to blame because you can't get your pulsar stuff this is the yeah. guy his cell phone number yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no look in the description J justin's a good guy glad to have him on the show as well and we've got some some pretty exciting yeah, stuff to yeah. talk about. So we uh, this is kind of a recap show. We have uh, we've done and put out a lot of information around Shot Show. As everybody knows, it's an industry show that's done once a year uh, at the beginning of each year in January, where a lot of new optics are released. But a lot of people don't know that uh, of a little show, and we say little, but overseas it's very big. It's called the EWA. And uh, there are a lot of overseas manufacturers, Pulsar included, that attend this show and they announce new products around this big show over in Europe. <clears throat> um, so there are some new things that we want to talk about and, and Jeff and Justin are here to do that. Uh, things that were announced at this EWA show. So I'll let Jeff explain what, what that is and how it relates to some of these new product releases. But you know, we've starting to see some of these new releases that were announced at SHOT Show being put into the market but there are some new things that people have questions about. So first of all, um, explain EWA, you know, mm -hmm. kind of, I guess Europe's version of SHOT Show. Correct, uh, yeah. The timing of all this. So SHOT Show is every January, you know, middle to end of January, you know, mark it in your calendar. Uh, EWA happens about a month and a half later. I uh, believe it's the very end of February, tail end of February, first of March. It's kind of, it's kind of hovered in that, in that realm. Um, every year and it is essentially the shot show for all of Europe mm -hmm. um, very you know large booths you know the pageantry everything is there just like you have mm -hmm. um, at shot show um, so yeah it is uh, their version of that you know a lot of the Europeans do come over here for shot show um, typically you know shot is gonna be a little bit more gun centric and mm -hmm. uh, you know, less hunting centric. It's going to be more about firearms industry, mm -hmm. you know, all the, you know, latest and greatest coming out for specific to this market. Europe's a completely different market. You know, Pulsar being a global company, um, they kind of time their releases. We, you know, this year, a majority of the rifle butter product came out at SHOT Show and a majority of the handheld clip on stuff came out at EWA. So in Europe, you know, the, the handheld market and the clip on markets are you know, a much stronger market where the U.S. is more of a rifle-mounted based uh, mm -hmm. clientele here. So mm -hmm. we kind of time these releases according to the like, tailoring for the shows and the market segments. So, um, yeah, really excited about, you know, what they did at EWA mm -hmm. and the response they got was amazing. And, you know. So with that, so let's talk, let's jump into this list because we've got some uh, models that are, are new. We've got some models that we're familiar with that are kind of getting some upgrades and stuff. So let's start out with, uh, we've heard a lot of talk. I mean, the Axion monoculars, everybody knows them. They've been around for years. Uh, they've, they've had a lot of transitions over the years. I mean, there's so many different models in the past and we were looking at 
the list yesterday and you know it's like seven or eight you know <laughs> models deep over the years but so we're all familiar with the axion 2 xq35 the xq35 lrf uh, but released on uh, some social media information the the past couple of weeks we've heard that there's a new pro version of these xqs coming out so it, get, it gives a little description of that what's that going to mean for that that the xq uh, Axion models. So we're moving from the standard version to a pro version. Okay. And what the single thing that we're doing there is a sensor upgrade across the entire line. So you're moving from a sub 40 millikelvin sensor to a sub 25 millikelvin sensor. Okay. And that's that is in the XQ series only. That is the XQ35 Pro and the XQ35 LRF Pro. Okay. So those two units are going to be getting a um, you know a, a better mm-hmm. sensor that's going to allow you to see you know in that lower millikelvin rating, what that's going to allow for you to do is you'll have better detail and, you know, slightly better detail in your, you know, above average to great conditions. But right. where it's really going to shine is in, you know, rainy, foggy, mm-hmm. humidity, um, anytime where there's moisture in the air, uh, where you don't have big temperature swings throughout the day, where you may have a, a cold day where it's 45 degrees all day. You know, tr- your your foliage is the exact same temperature. Mm-hmm. You know, all everything kind of blends together. This will give you the ability. Th- this lower millikelvin rating will give you the ability to decipher um, <clears throat> better in some of those in those ambient in those ambient. Um, you know. Yeah, heat and, and and definitely we've seen that with the thermion thermal scopes right. when they went to the pro sensor, the lower millikelvin, how well it is performing. In uh, on nights when there's higher humidity, moisture in air, it's doing really well. So, the Axion XQ going to the Pro Sensor um, price is it going to be a, a upgrade or up charge or something for this new sensor? Or? Um, no, it's going to replace the existing units on the market. So yep. the same retails in the non-Pro version and the Pro versions. It'll just be a um, neutral. Um, Good. You know, yeah. Like and, that. and so I'm assuming, because I know there's guys that are sitting out here watching this right now, go, man, I just bought my Axion. <sighs> so I know this is going to be an inline upgrade, but do you think this is going to be something like that we saw with the Thermions where, hey, it's a nice improvement. I'm really glad that we're moving this way. Or is it the, I've got to go throw my Axion away. It's no, no good. I just bought it six so, weeks ago. Or, again, you know. <laughs> yeah, again, I talk about Pulsar being a global company. You know, of, you know a lot of their... Um, you know, devices and sales and users are in Europe. Mm-hmm. Well, in Europe during hunting season, it's a lot different than mm-hmm. in the yeah. United States during hunting season. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're getting a lot more cold, overcast, dreary, mm-hmm. a lot of moisture in the air mm-hmm. situations. Mm-hmm. Where in the United States in the winter, typically our winters are a little bit more dry. Mm-hmm. You know, you have bigger temperature swings in the day. Mm-hmm. You know, sun comes out, heats everything up. Could be you know mid fifties. Sure. At night, it's going to be you know, mid thirties, twenties. So you're going to have these 20, 30 degree swings where mm-hmm. sun comes out, heats everything up and then sun goes down and everything looks beautiful and thermal. Right. And that's, and, and so y- what I'm getting at is this is your, you will, the average consumer will probably not be able to tell the difference of this unless they're hunting in extremely bad conditions. Sure. If you're hunting in bad conditions and you have a side by side, you're going to have it. But if you take this out in you know, in a spring day in, you know, the Midwest or, you know, Mm -hmm. South Dakota or wherever you might be where there's good swings, you're going to be hard pressed to tell which one is which. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you take this out in Florida in the summer Mm -hmm. when it's 95% humidity and it's, you know, 95 to, you Mm -hmm. know, 102 the whole time, Mm -hmm. um, even in the shade, then you'll be able to tell what the difference is. So, yeah. And, And, you know, it's one of those things earlier today, we were sitting around talking about the evolution of some of these optics going all the way back to the the trail xq38 days and mm-hmm. some of these very popular pulsar uh, optics and we were joking how even us until you go back two or three or four generations and pick one of those up you go wow we've come a long ways and it but but model to model it, it's just these little incremental steps but you mm-hmm. go a couple of years you're like Okay, now I'm seeing the big step, but but every little bit of that is just a, a another rung on the ladder, and so it's it's I, I like to see these, and I know there's people that hear this and they go, man, like again, I just bought this thing, now there's something new, but uh, I like what you're saying. We're not gonna don't throw yours away. It's not that kind of a step up. It's a little bit. You're gonna see that more, you know, as that ladder climbs. I always can. I mean, I always talk about 
thermal in compared to iPhones. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, it's nice to have the latest and greatest iPhone oh, yeah. 20, whatever yeah. it is now. <laughs> right. But your 17, 18, 19 exactly. version will perform, you know, yeah. almost do everything that the, the, sure. the next one will, mm -hmm. will do. Yeah. So it, it's not going to, if you have the existing Axion, it's not going to impair your hunting. It's yeah. not, yeah. not going to change, you know, what you're yeah. doing. That's right. Um, but this new enhancement is better in certain conditions, sure. and it's something that we're excited to offer the, the the market. So, Justin, let's roll into some other stuff here because I'm looking at this list, and I know there are some other stuff brought up with uh, Talions, maybe some similar things going on there. Talk to me here. Yeah, so it'll, it'll kind of follow a similar pattern. I think it'll be more comparable to the Thermions. Um, so. With the Talion, we've had the XQ38 for the last year. Uh, been a really good unit, 384, uh, 17 micron, sub 40 millicub, and good price point, performed well. So now that's going to be moving to an XQ35 Pro. Okay. So with that, there'll be two or three changes versus just the single sensor change on the Axions. So you're going to get that 384, 288, uh, sub 25 millicub, mm -hmm. so same as the Thermion XQ Pros and move to that 1.0 lens aperture. Okay. So XQ38 has been 1.2, similar to the old trail systems. Mm -hmm. Basically, you can think lens system, sensor, display, they're all basically getting right in line between that Thermion Pro and now this Talion Pro. Okay. So a Talion that was good is just gonna get a little better. <laughs> just gonna keep, <laughs> okay. keep making that. So better. another thing I think we need to talk about, and it's actually on the market. I think we've got them in stock set on the shelf. I know yep. we're going to be reviewing them here very soon. We've been hunting with them, but that's the Talion XG that was announced at shop, but they're here. They are. So I think it's been about a week to 10 days since we got the first units on the market. Uh, moving to that 640 system was a big accomplishment, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people, as much love as there is for the Thermion, they still like the AR base. They mm -hmm. want that trail system. Having that Talion XQ38 got us about 60% of that market fill mm -hmm. last year. This XG35, um, you know, retailing below that Thermion Pro mark and that field of view and 640 mm -hmm. sensor, I think it's going to be a real strong unit yeah. for, especially down here in the South. And right. Well, I, I got to say this. If people are watching this on YouTube, they're probably going, what in the world? This guys have got a table full of <laughs> binoculars. Oh, yeah. What is up? And, and guys, if you are not familiar with what these are, these are binoculars, but they're not your standard daytime <laughs> optic binoculars. These are the Pulsar mergers. And Hans and I have reviewed these on the Late Night Vision show before. We have gone on and on. We've gushed over how much... Uh, we liked them. I literally went on the show and said that these were the nicest built, mm -hmm. the best feel of a thermal optic that I've ever put my hands on. Mm -hmm. And I stand by that today. Every time I touch a pair, I feel like I've got my Zeiss binoculars in my hand. They are very, very nice. These are legit. But I think you've got some more stuff to talk about on the, the merger because we've got... The, the original merger is the merger. Yeah, so the yeah. merger uh, LRF XP50 would have been fall of last year. Mm -hmm. So we've had those out for you know six or seven months. They've done really well. Uh, at SHOT Show, you guys got to come by the booth and see it. I know a lot of people haven't put their hands on them yet. We're waiting on the first shipment, but we announced that XL system. Mm -hmm. So moving to that 1024, 768, Pulsar step into that HD sensor. Uh, so really the only price point and sensor level they hadn't touched, they went ahead and made a point to do that in EWA, and that's that XQ35 Pro, mm -hmm. or that XQ35 sub 25 millicoven sensor. So it's going to be a little bit smaller body, uh, 35 millimeter lens, so you're going to get a little bit narrower, a little mm -hmm. bit shorter, um, 1.0 lens aperture, Pro series as far as the sensor goes. I'm mm -hmm. uh, pretty excited just to see that little compact design, just take the same feel, mm -hmm. ergonomics yeah. and controls, and just shrink it down and make it a little bit more And a more affordable unit. Yes, yes. absolutely. I mean, more affordable. And so what, what, just to recap that real quick, guys, what he's saying is we're going to have the XPs that we've had, you know, for you know, recent months. We're going to have the XLs, which I think we just really glossed over the fact. Let's just say it again. <laughs> a 1024, yeah. a high-resolution 
super exciting. Again, I know that's, uh, that, that's been out there, that news is there, but there's been a lot of excitement in what that means for the brand and where it goes from there. Everybody cannot wait to get their hands on them. I know we've been uh, playing with some of these out here on the ranch and gosh, it is awesome. Cannot wait to uh, really get out there and demo those. But then again, moving, like you said, into an XQ, a 384 resolution, uh, that way, hey, there's a lot of guys that go, man, these XLs sound awesome, but mm -hmm. that's not quite mm -hmm. in my budget. Mm -hmm. But uh, as always, Pulsar has got something out there for, for everybody. And, and, you know, I think it's going to be exciting to have, uh, again, three different levels of where do you want to be, right. what fits your budget. That, and that's been the thing with binoculars. Um, they've always, you know, and, and Pulsar's always put out very quality binoculars all the way back from the accolades and out to the mergers. Mm -hmm. And, but for a lot of guys, it was, uh, out of the price range. It was always 640. It was like, man, I want binoculars, but I can't mm -hmm. spend that kind of, I can't spend 640 money now to be able to get that in a lower price point, 3D4 resolution. I think it's going to uh, really get a lot of excitement from, from people that have always wanted binoculars, but mm -hmm. couldn't justify spending that much money. But y'all we've talked and we're going to talk a little bit more about some more stuff. Uh, we will be obviously doing our reviews of each one of the things that we've talked about. So, uh, the you know Axion upgrades, the new mergers, uh, the Talion stuff, Talion XG. We're going to be doing a full review, so mm -hmm. stay tuned for all of that because we will be demoing this stuff, showing video. Uh, but we wanted to go through these. I know we're kind of going through them pretty quick, um, and we've got to get this information out. But we you know come back for more uh, in th in depth thorough reviews on all this stuff. So we've got a couple more things to get through. Mm -hmm. um, Justin, a familiar name from the past, the Kryptons. Those are getting yes. a facelift too, right? They are. Okay. So we're moving to the Krypton 2. Um, there's actually going to be two models of the Krypton this year. So last year we had the XG50. Mm -hmm. This year there'll be the Krypton 2 XG50 as well. But similar to the Thermion XG50 LRF, so they're going to be moving away from that BA sensor mm -hmm. to that Linred ULA system. So mm -hmm. a little bit more familiarity with Pulsar on that product, a little bit better uh, image in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. through that BA in the past. So body style will change, a little smaller, a little lighter, still running on that IPS7. Mm -hmm. Battery's gonna be top side instead of on the side, so I think it'll okay. be a better fit and weight balance distribution for your scope systems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, improvement on the sensor, full 1.0 lens aperture, and a little bit larger full color display as well. Okay. So Jeff, I know there's some more stuff coming, and this is one that I really wanna talk about. Uh, and it's a new handheld. And I tell you, the I think we need to preface this with talking about the Helion because the Helion has been the workhorse of the Pulsar handheld line since it was introduced in 2017. And I know Hans and I have always been uh, Helion users, the Helion XPs. Uh, they have just been fantastic units. And when I say a workhorse, they really, they take a, a lick in and just keep on ticking. They're getting thrown around. They're in your side-by-side. -side, they're in your backpacks. They're in your, uh, you know, truck seats. Uh, they're getting dropped accidentally. And they just, they just keep on going. Mm -hmm. The the uh, image quality the is Helions, better. you know, that you and I had for uh, years. This, is, this had, is embarrassing. I was thinking this the whole time. a set of Helions, and we use them for three years, four years, whatever. The, the XP 38 yeah and we wouldn't give them up and finally we're like well we got it I mean they're not even around anymore we need to get the, the newer version <laughs> yeah they hadn't been oh, around man. for years but yeah. we, we liked it it was a little lower magnification yeah. wider field of view and so yeah, yeah we used them long after yeah. they yeah. were gone but in and again the, the image quality was still mm -hmm. there with yeah. the upgrade yeah. through firmware uh so anyway it's just been a wonderful unit and and I'm going to say this and Again, this is maybe going a little far, but I, I don't want to offend any other manufacturers, but I think if they were sitting here, some of them might agree with this. There really hasn't been a strong competitor side by side to the Helion line, especially in these XPs with the image quality, removable battery, all, all these things that that unit has had. Again, going back to 2017, it's just been a great unit. So now that I've given the great sales pitch and tell everybody that the Helions are going away, but... I think the exciting thing is you're going to tell me, I hope, that this new unit is built off of that and better. Yeah. 
So 2017 was a very special year, not only for the thermal world, but also the Pulsar brand itself. You know, that was a the trail, Helion um, year kind of, you know, big coming out party for all of this. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, this new unit called the Telos um, is going to be, you know, the next version of this. So the first unit in the Telos series that we're releasing is going to be the XP50 LRF version. So first start off the bat, LRF mm. in the handheld, you know, that's one of the things that everyone's yeah. been, you know, asking for nonstop to, to have this upgrade on there. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, point number one. Point number two, the sensor that's going in this is the best 640 sensor that we've ever put on the market. It's going to be a sub 18 mil Kelvin 640 Linred ULA sensor. Mm. Um, can't say enough good things about the level of detail that you're going to be able to see with this sensor, good mm -hmm. conditions, bad conditions, whatever that might be. So this is going to be a, you know, uh, a very strong um unit in the market i think it will take it will pick up where the helion left off and and expand on everything that that helion was capable of this unit will be do more mm -hmm. um you know it's it's gonna have its uh, new battery system but it'll be no need for a dock you know mm -hmm. usb type c charger cool. which is going to be you know much more universal than having you know a docking station for it yep. uh, ambidextrous um Ha uh, handle on it, mm -hmm. so that'll be another thing. Uh, Magnification is going to be a little instead of having to go through the digital menu or the hot buttons to, to mm -hmm. go from two and a half to five and those big jumps. You're going to have a continue like almost like a continuous digital, but it would be a continuous zoom mm -hmm. uh, where you can go from two two point five, two point six, two point seven to where you want in a very easy mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to fight to find yeah. a button in the dark. Yeah, that's good. You you know where your you know where this ring is going to be and, mm -hmm. and what it's going to feel like, and you're going to be able to make adjustments on that. So um, looking extremely forward to, to launching this and probably the coolest thing on this is it's a it's a it's a serviceable unit mm -hmm. by serviceable we mean you can send it into the pulsar service center in mansfield texas and it will be upgradable to other sensors and other lens systems moving forward mm -hmm. so this will be a full line coming out you know eventually with with multiple iterations um in the tally i mean in, sorry in the Tello series, uh, but you will be able to, you know, down the road, if you bought a 640 and, mm -hmm. you know, you might want to go to the, the the XL sensor, you could send it in and we would be able to take your existing body and drop a sensor in there and sure. send you back your unit. I think that's really cool. You know, uh, I think that I hate to see the Helion go away, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, I trust Pulsar and I look at what they did with the trail. The trail was, you know, again, same year, 2017, everybody loved the trail. And we see that uh, with the slow passing of the trail, that baton has moved to the Thermion. Mm -hmm. And I know there's some guys that are going to be watching this going, I still love the trail. But the Thermion is a far superior unit. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I will argue that all day long. I mean, when, when yeah. you go to what the unit does, the image quality that's there, the function, the, all those things... Uh, again, whether you like the design or not, everybody can have their opinion on the new body style of the pickup truck, but I don't think there's any denying, uh, there's not, that the Thermion is a superior unit, and so I'm just bringing this to the Telos. I have to trust that, okay, my old trusty, you know, the old body style that I've always liked, but, but this Telos is is definitely exciting, and again, you you started with this, but yes, we've had the... Uh, the laser range finders on the Axions, but I can't tell you how many guys are like, man, I love my Helion. I love this 640, this image that, you know, I've spent the money to get this, but dang, I wish I could get a laser range finder. And now, again, moving forward and putting that in this, this first model of Telos is exciting. Yep. So we're, we're excited to see what this, you know, what this is going to do and we're excited what it's going to look like year two, three, four, and five mm -hmm. with this sure. service, with this, um, you know, new option and new wrinkle that, yep. you know, that no one in the thermal industry has been able to implement yep. uh, to date. So yeah. we're excited to see what this looks like. I think it takes away a lot of the concern people have with buying an optic and then six or months or a year down the road that they feel like, well, they're going to come out with something that's going to make mine obsolete. So with the uh, upgradable options, I think this is the first like it mm -hmm. on the market where you can actually send in and upgrade your your optic if you want to do so, uh, a more, uh, I guess, price uh, friendly option as far as buying, a, uh, instead of buying a whole brand new unit. But 
that is, I, I, again, you know, eliminating some of that concern of buyers of, of, of being able to get something that's going to be state of the art. If something a year or two, whatever, comes down the road and you're looking at more uh, HD sensors, higher resolution stuff, um, that does, that's an attractive feature. The Telos is something, uh, and again, we've talked about it, we're going to be reviewing all this stuff mm -hmm. uh, as always and showing a lot of video, but man, these uh, millikelvins, nobody knows what a millikelvin is. Yeah. <laughs> we just know that the lower the number, the better, but yeah. it was like 40, 25, and now minus 18 millikelvin. Where does it end? I mean, are we like getting into the negative numbers? Yeah, we're, we're getting into, into the North Dakota numbers. Yeah, the, the just negative. Know it's good. <laughs> we just know it's good, and and the lower the number, the better it's going to perform, especially in the in the worst weather conditions. Yeah, and I'm going to say this at the risk of chasing a rabbit, which if y'all watch the show, I'm good at doing. But you know, I think where I'm at right now on these millikelvins is this is a legit thing. So we chased microns for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to be 25 milli, I mean, not milli, I mean, microns, we went to 17, and there was this big push for 12. And I think now what we're looking and seeing, um, a lot of the Pulsar 17s are beating 12s. Yep. Uh, so I, I, I tell customers when they call now, I'm like, forget, forget the micron game. Yeah. Just, yeah. I wanna look through it, I wanna know what it looks like. But I think with the millikelvins, I was thinking this could be the same thing as some number, but I, what I have been seeing, I mean, as, as Pulsar continues to, to lower these millikelvin ratings and you go out there in bad conditions, I mean, driving rain, uh, fog, high humidity, I'm like, oh, wow, this is yeah. this is better. This yeah. is a loving every That's, one yeah. of these. And so I, I like where yeah. we're going, so I can't wait to see what sub 18 looks Yeah, you're like. right. The, the millico or the, the micron thing, people will call up when, you know, looking at optics like, oh, it's got to be 12. It's got to be 12 yeah. micron. It's resolution and it's millico already. Right I mean, now, really, I yeah. think now in the game it is. And that's what, if you're taking a look at those two as important, I'm not an engineer, Jason. <laughs> Jason plays <laughs> one on TV. I, I got, <laughs> my kids have Legos. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but from what we've seen, you know, if you're paying attention to resolution and the sense of sensitivity of the sensor, um, you're going to get a good optic if those are two metrics you're using. And when Pulsar started to make all these upgrades on the millikelvin um, sensors, they had the, you know, it, it's not the you know most sexy and fun thing to talk about mm -hmm. you know N -E -T -D. What's, what's the yeah yeah, N -E -T -D, yeah, yeah, yeah right. rating <laughs> you know all of this so it was a afterthought and then once we started realizing we've got to educate this you know a educate ourselves on what this millikelvin rating can do any TD sensor thing mm -hmm. then how do we push that into the consumer market how do, how do we get to the dealer mm -hmm. and then from the dealer yeah. to the end user mm -hmm. because Millikelvin, Milikelvin. Yeah, we've had we get a lot of we've had a micron. Yeah. We've had, you know, one of the, my one of my uh, favorite sales guys at the office, CB. He that first year we had the the rating Millikelvin. Mm -hmm. He was calling it Milokelvin, uh, <laughs> like everything out there as a joke. But yeah, yeah uh, right. it was funny because we, you know, no one knew what it was. No yeah. one knew how to call it. Yeah. No one knew nobody how to explain about. it. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, not until they did went to the twenty five. Nobody was really even they didn't know what it was. Twenty five. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and guys, I think right now, I know there's some of y'all that are watching this going, I still don't know what a microphone is. I don't know. And, and you know what? Hans and I, we take the approach of the everyday guy. Um, I'm not an engineer. I don't care anything about any of that. I want to know is the proof in the pudding? What does it look like? Yeah. And I think you that, look, what we do is just look through it. Hey, yeah. this one looks better than this one. Exactly. You know, yeah. And so. I think that's the benefit that, that, that Hans and I have. It's, it's a luxury. It's a blessing that we're able to put all these units side by side. That's why we do what we do is to be able, because we know you can't do that. You, you don't have the opportunity and maybe to put last year's model and the year before and we can build off of that and so for me just the poor boy way of doing it i can say this lower millikelvin rating deal is legit it yeah, looks yeah. good that's all i care about is it looks good yeah. so listen guys i know we got to wrap this up enjoyed having both y'all on the show again um we would love to have justin back on i don't <laughs> want jeff trying to add any more notches or anything to his belt but i guess i guess if if we have to, yeah. as, as long as you bring new products to the show, we'll, we'll, we'll be back later the show. Yeah, be, uh oh, I it. think that was a, I don't know if that was a threat or a promise. <laughs> but, uh, all right, guys. So, dude, thank you very much for coming on. Enjoyed it. Thanks for having us back out here at the Selmark Ranch. This is an awesome, awesome place, and uh, we were really glad to be here on location uh, with the Pulsar guys. We hope you enjoyed the show. Again, Hans mentioned it. 
uh, it, you probably watch the show and you go, man, I didn't hear all the pricing. There was a lot of specs and features and weird numbers being gone over. I don't know what it means. Y'all got to tell me what it looks like. We will. We will be reviewing uh, these optics on this show right here. All we've got to do is get these guys to get uh, a few of them in our hands. And uh, trust me, they want to do it because they want to get them in their hands too. <laughs> but, but they will be, and we will be testing those out ASAP uh, as soon as we can get them. Uh, this spring and summer and bringing you those full field reviews uh, right here on the Late Night Vision Show. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you are looking for the latest breaking news or reviews on any of these great Pulsar products and other stuff, you can find it right here at the Late Night Vision Show. And you can find us at the latenightvisionshow.com. Thanks. Hope to see you all again here next week.